Well, good morning. It's so great to come into your homes and uh, once again uh, worship God <clears throat> together. And uh, I hope and pray that you and your family are keeping well. We are coming towards a time where we will be coming back to church. And as you've heard in the announcement that, uh, <clears throat> that uh, as of next week, our church is going to come back together. And um, this announcement was made yesterday um, when uh, here in New South Wales we have reached 80% of vaccination. So <clears throat> as of next week, we'll be back in church, guys. And um, I hope you have done your RSVP. Those people who did uh, 9.30 a.m. service is full to capacity because we've got to keep up with the uh, restrictions um, uh, the rules that are applied to us uh, as we <clears throat> come back to church and uh, our 11 o'clock service, we still have a lot of uh, opportunity for people to <clears throat> RSVP. This morning as we uh, go into the Word of God, <clears throat> I'd like to encourage you. You know, uh, for some time now, I've been talking about... Uh, the end times, for some time now, I've been talking about the heart. Uh, for some time, you know, I've been talking about uh, that we're coming towards a time. You know, when you, when you look around the world, when you look at the news that is happening around the world, uh, when you look at uh, what is happening in Israel, what you, when you look at uh, 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 the news uh, in America and the Europe and the Middle East, uh, uh, there is so much of tension there. Now, when, you, when I read the Word of God, I'm reminded that uh, <clears throat> towards the end of times, these things is so important to happen. And uh, we as believers, where do we fit in here? I mean, I here in Australia, we have experienced a lockdown and, you know, uh, vaccination and, you know, how we had restrictions and all of those things uh, that uh, we've never experienced before. And many people are shocked. Many people um, uh, are, are upset about things. Many people have lost their jobs. When, when I was thinking about all of these, <clears throat> I'm reminded from the Word of God that as we come towards the end of times, as we come to a time where the soon return of Jesus is very imminent, what do we do? You know, um, uh, about a week, uh, probably about a, within the last month, I was watching a documentary about 9-11. Uh, you know, they celebrated 20, uh, 20th anniversary. Uh, this happened in 2001. And uh, when that happened, you know, they repeated the stories, what happened behind it. Uh, I was very intrigued to... to to, to hear the stories or get to know the stories about some of the things that people did while on the Twin Towers. When they saw that this building is going to collapse, when they saw the building across was hit, what did people do? Now, mind you, I want you to understand that in the Twin Towers, it was the World Trade Center, the top of all the companies in America, they had the office there. The top people, the educated, uh, uh, the rich people, and uh, uh, looking after the, the, the big companies, they were all there. They were very educated, highly educated, very rich and famous people there. But when that particular thing happened, what was their reaction? How did they react to this? I saw in the documentary that some people were calling their families. Remember, this was quite early in the morning. And uh, no one was home. The kids had gone to school. You know, the wife uh, would have gone to work or the husband went to some other jobs. But they were calling their homes, realizing that this is the last message they would want to send to their family. Some of the messages that was uh, played during this documentary uh, said in the answering machi machine, it said that, um, I love you. Please look after you. I do not know whether I'm going to come out of this. 
You know, I love you. At that very moment, at that very moment, all the money they had, all the status in life, uh, all the things that they had acquired that, uh, that, that uh, was so important to them meant nothing. All they wanted to do is give their last message of love and hope. It was uh, many years ago, I also read that there was a, uh, a Russian submarine, a nuclear submarine, that uh, there was an explosion underwater and it went down to the bottom of uh, the ocean. And uh, there was one compartment where about 23 Navy uh, personnel, they were stuck there. As they were waiting for death to happen, death to come, they were writing notes to their families, that one day, if, if this vessel is rescued, this vessel is found, they would be reading these notes. And these notes, even though they were top guys and, you know, generals and all these high-class people, all of that disappeared. They had a simple message of love and say, encouraging their family not to despair. You know, friends, similarly... <clears throat> We find in the Word of God, similarly, we find in the Word of God in the book of Daniel chapter 3. Now, this is a very famous scripture that we find in the book of Daniel chapter 3, reading from verse 14 onwards, uh, a time when the Israelites, they were in captivity. And while they were in captivity uh, in Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, he was a very powerful man. He made a 90-foot uh, image or an idol. And he said everyone in his rule, in his kingdom, everyone, when the music happens, they will all have to bow down. We pick it up from verse 14. It says, Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods, or worship the gold image which I have set up. Now if you are ready, now if you are ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the, you know, by this time, Nebuchadnezzar is a little angry. He's, he's saying to the guys, hey, what's wrong with you? Everyone is bowing down to this golden image. Now, boys, I'm going to give you another opportunity. I'm going to play the same music again. I'm going to repeat everything. And he said, uh, when the flute, the harp, the lurk, the psalm tree, and in symphony, all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Now, he was very angry. He said, boys, this is what you got to do. I am challenging you. No one is going to rescue you. You know, many times we feel like that. We feel forced into things that we do not want to do. And we feel that very much here. Here in New South Wales and a lot of people experiencing in different parts of Australia, that we've been forced into things. We've been forced into lockdown. Forced. Why? Because of, a, of the pandemic. And the Bible goes on to say, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in verse 16, answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we... Have no need to answer you in this matter. By this time they had made up their mind. They, these three young Hebrew boys, they had made up their mind that they are not going to bow down. But they said it to the king. If that is the case, our God, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But, verse 18 says, But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. 
Now, stop there for a moment. These three Hebrew boys, they are in captivity. They are pressured into doing something that was against their belief. What do you do? I've heard of people, you know, uh, I've heard of stories of people who are dying for some reason. You know, they want to they wanna give a message of, uh, of saying, man, I want to live. I don't want to die. But they, they're sort of crying out for help to the friends and family around. It's a desperate call, but helplessly they are dying. That wasn't true for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All they had to do was bow their knee. And they would get out of this pressure. They would get out of, of, uh, of uh, being humiliated. Get out of uh, losing their house, their possessions, and losing, uh, 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 being punished by the king. But they said, let us. Uh, make it very plain and clear to you, O King Nebuchadnezzar. And that is the God we serve. He's going to protect us. But if he doesn't, if he doesn't do that, it is plain and simple and very clear that we will not bow down to this golden image. Bible says, And King Nebuchadnezzar, verse 19, was full of fury, and the expression on off on his face changed. All of a sudden, he went from a nice man to a very angry man. He said, how dare you, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat up. They heat up the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. Usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in the army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. And these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, their turbans and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound and therefore because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Let's stop there for a moment. Bible tells us, friends, that the king was so angry with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that they were bound so they couldn't escape. And the king ordered his strongest army, his soldiers, to come and throw them into the fiery furnace. And they were thrown into the fiery furnace. Bible tells us that the Men of valor, those strong soldiers, even they were killed because they had lighted up the fire seven times more. It's just an expression of language, seven times more. They didn't have thermostat in those days to light it up. or They wouldn't know what is two times hotter or seven times hotter, but it was really hot. And threw more firewood there. And... Uh, and then they were thrown into the midst of the fiery furnace. My question to you this morning is, that as we come towards the end times, and uh, talking about the end times, you know, many people do not want to hear that because, you know, it uh, puts fear in us. My purpose is never to put fear. It's in the word of God. If you read the book of Revelation, if you read the Gospels, if you read the book of Daniel, it talks about the end times. And you know what? As believers, as Christians, it would be foolish for us not to pay attention to this. Why? Because Jesus himself said, when these things happen, look up, lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. It means your Redeemer is about to come. We are about to leave the earth. We are coming towards the end of time. And when we look at these end times, friends, things are going to get tough. Let me tell you this. Already we are finding it hard. 
life is getting hard. And when things start heating up in our life, how do we react? Do you get angry, you know, when you go to work and you say, man, the boss looked at me with an angry face. Or my superior, my supervisor, he gave me a hard time. Or the doctors told me about my health issues. Man, life is hard. Life is hard. Can I tell you, look at the life of this man. When we are about to face death, when we are in a place and position where we are challenged, where we could die. When I look, about, uh, look at uh, people around the world, so many missionaries, so many Christians in places like China were thrown into prison for years and years. Uh, people in Middle East, Christians, who are secret Christians, uh, and they are found out and they are killed, beheaded. Some terrorists even go after Christians. Even I've heard stories in, in uh, Afghanistan how the Taliban came into power and the Christians were persecuted and killed secretly. What do you do? Can I tell you, living in the modern Western world, things are not going to be the same forever. Things are going to get hard and difficult because this is what the Word of God says. Look at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had a defiant faith. And when they were faced with death, the only thing that mattered to them was their belief. What they believe with all their heart, their convictions, what they know that they should not do, and that is not bow down to any idol. What about our idols? What about our idol in the Western world? And I think our idol many times would be things like, you know, comfort. We don't want to be uncomfortable. If life gets a little uncomfortable, man, I can't take it. We complain, we whinge about it, we, we are so distressed. No, no. When our life comes to a point, when we go through fire, and can I tell you, fire we cannot escape. Every Christian, no matter which, uh, uh, how many years we've been a Christian or what level in our walk, in our journey with God is, every Christian one day is going to be faced with fire. What do you do? What do you do at that time? You know, people, as I said in the documentary in 9-11, they were calling their families, they were writing notes, thinking that if somehow this is found, it will give them or uh, it will give them some comfort and some hope knowing that these were the last words before this person died. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were defiant in their faith. They were strong. They were bold in their faith. And they said, no matter what happens, we will not bow down. Even facing the king, the most powerful man in the world, they said, this matter is settled. Our convictions, our belief in God is so strong that even if we face death, we will not bow down. Bible tells us they were thrown into the fiery furnace. This was the final goodbye for them. But apparently something else happened here. The Bible tells us in uh, verse 24, it says, Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to the counselors, Did we not cast three men? Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered. I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Something happened, friends. All of a sudden, things changed. Nebuch Nebuchadnezzar, who was so angry, all of a sudden his tune changes. And he says to his officers, his soldiers, he says, hey, didn't you throw only three men in there? 
They said, yes. And then he says, I see all these men who were bound, who were, who were, who were strapped. You know, ropes were t- tied around them, but they are not hurt. All of a sudden, these kings, language changes. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Come here. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. And the satraps, uh, administrators, and governors, and the kings, uh, counselors gathered together, and they saw these men on whose bodies fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were the garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Uh, Let's just go back for a moment. As they were thrown into the midst of the burning fiery furnace, something miraculous happened, friends. Bible tells us that their hands and feet, the trap, the, the straps that were binding them came loose. And they were standing up. There were thinking, man, now it's going to start. We're going to start, all our flesh is going to melt away. But they thought, hey, it's not even getting warm. And they looked at their hands and their feet and their hair. Nothing was damaged. Nothing was happening to their body. That is an amazing thing. Hey, just hang on there. More amazing thing happened was... All of a sudden, there was Jesus. You know, the Bible doesn't say much about the fourth man, but we all know many times Jesus has appeared in the Old Testament. It's called theophany, which means God appearing in human flesh. And he was in the midst of the fiery furnace. Friends, can I tell you, whenever we stand for God... Whenever we face the fire, we give Jesus the opportunity to come in the midst of our fire. You know, many of us, we pray all the time, God, I don't want, I want to be fire free. I want to be discomfort free. I don't want any fire. I don't want any discomfort. I want to be as comfortable as I can. We all want that. Can I tell you? But that is not what God says in his word. Here the Bible tells us when they took that stand, it was so easy for them to get out by just bowing down. No one would have seen them. You know what? Everyone was on the same page and they would have gone along with the flow. But all of a sudden, the Bible tells us when they took that stand of even going into the fire, not only they were not burnt, but they gave an opportunity for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Almighty God to come in the midst of the fire. I was thinking... Last night as I was reading this passage, I was thinking, what would they have been talking about? You know, all of a sudden, their their fear, their despair, all of a sudden would have changed into a glorious praise and worship time in the furnace. They would have seen the God whom they believe, the God for whom they took this stand, the God for whom they entered into the fire, and they would have been rejoicing, filled with so much of joy. What would they have said to Jesus? And I also thought, what would have Jesus said to them? What would have God said to them? And I was thinking, maybe God said to them, It's not in the Bible, but it's my version. Jesus would have said to them, boys, I'm really proud of you. I am really proud of you for the stand that you took. I am so honored that 
You know, in my diary, can I tell you, God has no time. The Bible says one day in the eyes of God is like a thousand years. You know, I, I just believe that in his diary, Jesus would have, God would have written that on this particular day, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are thrown into the fiery furnace, I'm going to be there. He made a plan. What if, what if I thought, if only Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego bowed down to this golden image? They would have missed out on this great opportunity of meeting the God that their ancestors all looked forward to but never had the opportunity to see face to face. And I think Jesus would have said to them, boys, I'm really proud of you. Heaven is rejoicing today because of you. Not running away from the fire, but going through the fire. Boys, I want you to know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that it will be written in the history of mankind for centuries to come that this particular account of you not bowing down to any graven image, to any idol, but taking a stand and coming into the fire, is going to be, this account will be written and celebrated. Not only that, but I believe that Jesus said to them that many, many Christians all over the world who are going to face the fire would be encouraged because of your stand. I believe that Jesus would have said to them, boys, I'll wait for you in heaven. When I see you in heaven, there's going to be a bigger rejoicing with all the angels in heaven. And, you know, I was thinking about it and I thought, man, and many times we as believers, as Christians, we miss out. We miss out because we don't want any discomfort. You know, the church, the believers, they are full of problems and situations that life throws at us. And if anyone who's going through anything in their life, if they say something to one another, if they look differently or if they ignore someone because what they're going through, we feel offended. Hey, that's nothing compared to what Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego did. Are we afraid of this fire? I believe time is coming that every one of us, all over the world, all Christians are going to face difficulties. And I'm not a doom and gloom preacher. I'm not a doom and gloom prophet that is prophesying, but the word of God says so. Bible tells us that, that all of a sudden, because of this stand, this same king who was so angry that these boys disobeyed his command, he is now the praise leader, the worship leader, glorifying and praising their God. In verse 28 it says, Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The same guy who said you will not bow down to anyone but to this image. He said, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word. Even the king himself is saying this. And yielded their bodies that they should not serve or worship any other God except the, their own God. Next verse says, therefore, therefore I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made as ash heap because there is no other God who can deliver like this. And the Bible says, finally, in verse 30, then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. 
Friends, here the Bible says, King Nebuchadnezzar is now all of a sudden, he, everything changed for him. He is the one cheering these guys. He's saying, hey, your God is a great God. Hey, there is no God like your God. And he makes a decree, he makes a law that if anybody speaks against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be killed, their house will be destroyed, and uh, there is no other God who can deliver like this. Not only he made a declaration, but the Bible tells us he goes on and promotes Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from their small positions to a higher positions. I believe with all my heart, friends, as I finish this morning, that there is coming a time when things are going to be difficult. But the Bible also says there is coming a time when God is going to send His Spirit upon the earth with so much more anointing and power. And I believe the time is now. At the last revival that was prophesied, that was said in the word of God. It is the last harvest of souls that is going to happen all over the world before Jesus comes. And this gospel, the Bible says in Matthew 24, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the ends of the earth and then the end shall come. In other words, God is asking or calling every one of us to stand up. To stand up to every opposition. And man, you may be saying, man, I am so tired of my work. I want to leave this job. But who knows? Who knows? As I said, uh, 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 preached about two weeks ago, that you are the light of the earth. You're the light of the world. Maybe God has put you there so that you can be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Maybe your supervisors are giving you a difficult time. Maybe God has put you there to be in the fire. Can I tell you, many times God rescues us from the fire. Praise God. You may be not having a any job problems, maybe you're not having any health problems, there's no problems with your children, there's no problems with your finance, praise God. But there are times when we face difficulties, face problems with our finance, family problems, uh, health problems, uh, problems uh, with uh, our spouse, uh, marriage problems. Maybe you're going through fire. Can I tell you not to pray against it? But pray, God, the fourth man in the fiery furnace to come in my fire. And I believe many times we miss that opportunity for him to come. As we prepare for the last revival, I believe with all my heart that the fourth man in the fire, Jesus who died for us, on the cross of Calvary, he shed his blood for us. On the third day, he rose up again from the dead. Is inviting all his people to come. And for those that are believers and Christians, it is time that we pray this daring and dangerous prayer. And the prayer would be that God Almighty, help me to go through the fire, to stand in the fire, to stand in difficulties, to get into things that you are calling me to. Maybe God is calling you to go into, uh, to, to, to be a counselor in your local council. Maybe God is calling you into politics, to be a voice of God in that situation. Maybe God is calling you to higher authorities, to go to places, to share the gospel with people of influence. And not to run away from the difficult task. You know, the most blessed thing that any Christian could have or do in their life is pray that God would help you to fulfill your purpose. 
the calling of God to be fulfilled in your life. You know, the most rewarding thing for any Christian would be to fulfill the call of God in your life and not to run away from it. You know, every one of us, whether you like it or not, would be faced with difficulties. You know, when I read the word of God, there were people like Stephen in the New Testament who was faced, the first martyr, person who died for their faith, was stoned and he died rejoicing. He could have run away, could have stood up and escaped, but he did not. People like Paul, Peter, and all the disciples of Jesus who faced difficulties, who went through the fire, and they came out good. You know, Jesus did not promise his disciples to say, we've got this all mixed up in our Christian faith. Jesus did not say to his disciples, boys, you know, you will go after I... I you know, ascend into heaven, you will have a very good life, you'll have a very big house, so many houses, cars, and business, and money, and a nice family. He said, no, none of that is mentioned in the Bible. He said, in the world, you will be persecuted, you will be tortured, you will die, and this gospel needs to be preached all over the world. You will go through fire. He said, he said, in the world, you will have trouble. Jesus didn't say, oh, you will not have any trouble. You'll escape. No, no, no. He said, come, boys, follow me, and you'll get into trouble. You'll be persecuted. You will go through difficulties in your life. And thousands and thousands of people follow Jesus. Every one of them died as a martyr except for John, the beloved who was exiled in the island of Patmos. You read the word of God. Everyone right from the Old Testament who followed Jesus, followed God, they were tried, tested in the fire. And when they went through fire, Jesus, God, got glory out of it. And God is calling us as well to become defiant, strong, and bold in our faith. You know, in the world, you'll have enemies. You know, if you say, man, I don't have any enemies, well, you might not title them that way, but people who don't like you, who are against you, you know, whatever you say. But even Jesus had enemies. Put it this way. Disciples had enemies. Everyone who followed Jesus and fulfilled the call of God in their life would have enemies. Whatever you do in life these days, there's some people who do not like you for some whatever reason. But can I tell you, the best thing that you can do to shame your enemies but give glory to God is fulfill the purpose of God in your life. When you do that, you will go through fire, but the fourth man would always be there. Jesus said, in a book of Isaiah says, when you go through the fire, I'll be there. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you until the end of the age. He said, don't worry about what you're going to say. When you get there, I will give you the word. He said, I am with you. There's a reward for every one of us in heaven. There's going to be a time when we will all have to give an account of the calling of God in our life. Not for being a good Christian. No. What did you do with the talents and abilities? Many of us are sitting with our talents and abilities so that we will not go through any fire. No discomfort comes to us. No, no, no. Those who go through the fire, go through discomfort, go through hardship, serve God, fulfill the purpose of God, Jesus always comes. I remember as I finish. Uh, in 2001, after the 9-11, we went to India. And, uh, and um, I, I left my family, my kids were very small at that time. Maureen and the kids, they were left in Delhi. And um, I went with a pastor here to Punjab for the first time. And I went to a very remote village. 
and they didn't, you know, have electricity. They used the uh, kerosene lights or the benzene lights and all those lanterns they were using. And so many people were gathered in that village. And I was preaching. I, I remember nine uh, um, sick men with uh, 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 Punjabi men with turbans, you know, gave their life to Jesus. Uh, what a glorious time it was to see you know, in a new place. But somehow somebody reported to the police of Punjab that, uh, you know, there's a Christian uh, man here who's converting people to Christianity. I was preaching the gospel. And in the middle of the night, the police came and grabbed me. It was pitch dark. As I said, no electricity, no road lights. They grabbed me. There were so many pastors who couldn't do anything. You know, they were uh, talking to the police, but they came in the Jeep. They took me. <clears throat> and I thought, man, you know, 9-11 happened. And at the same time in Delhi Parliament, there was terrorists who came and stormed into that. And, you know, it was very... Tense time there. They were not leaving anyone. And I was sitting in the jeep and I was thinking, man, I'm going to be thrown into the prison. <clears throat> you know, Maureen and the kids uh, uh, won't know about it because I didn't have any mobile phones at that time. And, uh, you know, what's going to happen to life? At that time, I forgot about everything. And the only thing that gave me comfort was the belief and the faith that I had in God, that God is with me. You know, some places like that, in some countries, they would beat you to death. And they would put false allegations and just let you go. If not, you could die. At that time, I was thinking, God, you are with me. Gave me so much comfort. After so long time, in the middle of the night, they let me go. And finally... I was so happy that I would be meeting my family again. What do you do at that time? You hang on to your faith. And I encourage you this morning as I finish, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have escaped by simply bowing their knee. Everything forgotten. We wouldn't be reading about them today. I want to encourage you, stand up for God because the fourth man has a lot of appointments that is not fulfilled because people are escaping to go through the fire. So friends, would you allow the fourth man an opportunity to come? Not only that, the testimony of the people in the world would be so great. Jesus is going to be glorified and you would be promoted and rewarded for the stand that you make. Would you pray with me? Father, this morning I honor you, I worship you, I praise you. Thank you for the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and all those who have uh, selflessly given their life for your kingdom. I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we're living in the end times, that we would not be too comfortable and enjoying the comfort of life without realizing that we are living in the times when you your word had prophesied that things are going to get difficult that your soon return is very imminent and that we would be persecuted we would be hated for even in the western countries who once believed and stood on the word of God would turn against Christianity I pray father that you would encourage us this morning uh, from the word of God that even in our workplace we would not try to escape uh, but we would go through the fire believing the fourth man, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the god of this universe would come in the midst of the fire and lord your name would be glorified and uh, lord that people would know that there is a god in heaven. I pray father that give us that boldness, that confidence, uh, that we would fulfill the calling of God in our life. Uh, so
serve God with all our heart and not worry about uh, what people would say, not worry about our enemies, not worry about anyone else that we would forgive people, but that we would be so bold in our faith that I am going to fulfill the purposes, the destiny, the calling of God that he has placed in my life. And we would not escape fire because one day we would be rewarded for going through fire. Bless every family this morning, those that are going through fire, in their finance, in their homes, in their marriages, with their health. Lord, I pray, may your healing virtue flow in their body, heal them. May you miraculously provide for them finance, Lord. May there be unity and forgiveness in homes, Father, that in the midst of all these, they would be looking for the fourth man. And you always are faithful to come. Your word says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will glorify me in your word. Father, so I pray, bless all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you. It was so good uh, to come into your homes and make sure we'll see you in church next week. We are really excited and waiting to see every one of you. Until then, the Lord bless you. God bless you. <music>